So glory to God. I want to uh, welcome you, saints and prayer warriors, to another beautiful, beautiful day here in the Pensgrove, New Jersey area. We are here in the studio, and we are doing our, this is our fifth day with, fifth day with, uh, in what accord uh, for 40 days, uh, prayer, fasting, joining together in agreement, and uh, we're here right now in the studio, and um, I'm just excited to be able to, um, to be here and to continue to keep praying for you in the morning. So we normally start off with our cleansing prayer, and uh, here we go. Uh, Heavenly Father, I come before you today in the throne room of grace, that through the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, to receive your abundant grace and mercy. Lord Jesus, we confess that you are Lord of our lives. We confess and we ask you, Lord, that the resurrected power of the Holy Spirit to fill and saturate every being and every part of our being. We surrender all our spirit, soul, body completely to you. And now I ask you to reveal in me, remind us, Lord God, of any sin that we've committed, known or unknown so that we can confess and repent of them accordingly. At this time, I just want you to go ahead and just pray what's on your heart this morning. Was there any anything known or unknown? Things that maybe the Lord has placed upon your heart that you have to come clean for. Allow the Holy Spirit to renew and reveal it to you. Hallelujah. And cleanse me. Cleanse me from all defilement of the world. Sanctify me and my family line of any unrighteousness with the blood of Jesus. And now by my own will, I choose, I choose to forgive everyone that has offended me or hurt me. I release them in the freedom of my forgiveness. And I also release them from the debts that they owe me. I now cast all my burden to you, Lord. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. And now I put on the whole armor of God that you've given us. Girt ourselves with the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, and my feet are fitted with the gospel shoes of peace so that I can pray and intercede in the Holy Spirit by your mighty power. And after done all to stand, I stand firm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have a declaration prayer, and we declare that in the name of Jesus, that we are mighty warriors and that from within us shall the roar of the Lion of Judah be heard. We are aligned with the mind of Christ, and through Jesus we are warriors and overcomers, full of joy and faith. We declare today that the Holy Spirit anoints us, and that the Lion of Judah will arise in us. We declare that we must be sober, watchful, against the foe of the devil who prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We are positioned to enter the promised land. We declare today that we endure light, temporary suffering in order to achieve an incomparable and everlasting glory. We declare the old and wrong foundations will be torn down and that we will leap forward into God's plan for each and every one of us. We declare today that God will create new connections to help us to move forward. And we declare that the wisdom and discernment of God will grow in us day by day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
we decree over America. Join me. We, your ecclesia, the church is God's governed body on the earth. We have been given legal power and authority from heaven. We are God's ambassadors and spokespersons over the earth. That through the power of God, we are his world influencers. Because we are the covenant with God. And we are equipped and delegated by him to destroy every attempted advance of the enemy. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we declare that America, executive government, will honor and defend the Constitution. We declare that our legislative branch, the Congress, will write only laws that are righteous and constitutional. We decree that our judicial system will issue rulings that are biblical and constitutional. We declare that we stand against wokeness, the occult, and every evil attempt against our nation. We declare that we, are, we now take back our God-given freedoms according to our Constitution. We declare that we take back influence at the local level in our communities. We decree that the blood of Jesus covers and protects this nation, and it protects and separates us for God. We declare that our nation is energy independent. We declare that America is strong spiritually, financially, militarily, and technologically. And we decree that evil carries no power, authority, or rights in our land, nor over our people. We decree that we will operate in unity, going beyond denominational lines in order to accomplish the purposes of God for our nation. And we decree that America shall be saved in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, we're praying for the body of Christ in America with the respect of marriage, that we as the body of Christ, we as the body of Christ, would stand on what the spiritual understanding of marriage is. So we will read some scriptures and then we will pray. Isaiah 57, 20 and 21. But the wicked are like the tossing sea, which cannot rest, whose waves cast up mirror and mud, there is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Isaiah 58, 1 and 2. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does not that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Isaiah 58, 11 and 12. The Lord will guide you always, and he will satisfy your needs in the sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like well-watered garden like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will rise up in the old age foundations, and you will be called repairers of the broken walls, restorer of streets and with, with uh, dwellings, and dwellings. Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. Arise and shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and the thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Hallelujah. 
So we pray for the church is the key, is the key of turning things around. The church is. Understanding this, we're praying for the body of Christ in respect for marriage. Father, we praise and praise you that even though the wicked are ups and downs like the sea, you say the wicked will have no peace. The church is the key to turning things around. In the darkness covering the earth, when darkness covers all peoples, you are about to appear and shine on your church. Raise up your ecclesia. Proclaim the trumpet and awaken the people of the United States to make them understand about marriage. Turn back to you in time to defend the institution of marriage that you instituted and to walk in your righteousness. So this morning we declare, we declare in the name of Jesus that the Lord God will intervene in the hindrance so that the quick vote of the wicked will not come to pass. We declare spirit of fear of God descend upon leaders, giving moral courage to no longer fear the LGBTQ voices, and the body of Christ will stand with truth on marriage between man and woman. We decree that all 50 states must further legislate to eliminate child brides and protect the rights of pedophile victims. We decree that Yahweh, God, is the God of, of no control. You reign in America forever and ever. And we pray and decree the ecclesia of the earth will rise and shine and the rule of the earth will God, with God, seal the breaches and rebuild his walls in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I have to take a moment. I just sense some distractions. I just sense right now in the name of Jesus. Distractions. We've had distractions with our internet this morning. We've had distractions with things in here. We've had some different distractions. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against the enemy and every tactic that he would have to try to stop, hinder, or move forward in your God and your God given and your desire, Lord God, and what you want to do. Father, we take authority in the name of Jesus. We release the spirit of freedom, to release the spirit of, of the Holy Ghost to change the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray for our five states. We pray for Massachusetts, the Bay State. And we declare that we, the people of the body of Christ, lift up Massachusetts, acknowledge with gratitude, with goodness of the greatest legislator in the universe, who is, with his will, has provided us with a safe harbor of opportunity and prosperity, where there is no fraud or violence, where people covenant to love one another, and where we build a state of peace based on biblical truth for ourselves and future generations. Massachusetts is the mother of all nations, the state that represents the very birth and development of our nation. The voice of my people will be heard louder than the voice of the enemy in this state. Pray that the believers have full faith. Pray that they enter into weapons, into the weapons of deliverance. Stir them up, Lord, and pray that they frustrate the enemy. Pray that they fight for their covenant. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. We lift up Michigan, their motto. If you're looking for a beautiful peninsula, look around you. We pray for the people of Michigan 
We pray that they are thankful to the Most High God Almighty for the freedom and blessings that they have received, and they sincerely desire those blessings. We sincerely desire that these blessings will not be lost among them, and future generations so that they seek God's security and entrance into their protection. We lift up Minnesota, the North Star State. And we declare with the people of Minnesota, we thank God for our livelihood and religious freedom. And we long for God's blessings to continue and endure among us and our descendants. We long for God's blessings to continue and endure among us of our descendants and ask God to keep us. Lord, we decree that the state of Minnesota is, is, is the threshing floor. The grain will be so high that they will need to help to harvest it. Fertility and blessing, the favor of the Lord, you will possess the gates of your enemies. Jehovah Jireh will manifest. Pray for a quick end of the flooding of the Islamic prayer siren throughout the airways of Minneapolis, which came about during the breakdown or the lockdown of COVID-19. We pray for righteous leaders in Minnesota and also righteous representatives and senators from Minnesota at the federal level. Yes, Lord, Minnesota will possess the gates of its enemies. We lift up right now the Magnolia State. We lift up Mississippi. And we pray along with the people of Mississippi that are gathered together in thanksgiving to the Most High, Almighty God, and the blessings that he has bestowed upon them. And we honor them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the land of Mississippi. We lift up, Lord, the Show Me State, the Mississippi State, the, excuse me, the Missouri State. And we join with the people of Missouri and keep reverence for the supreme ruler of the universe and the immense gratitude for their goodness and kindness. We ask God's help to build a better home for Missouri. And we ask God's help to build Missouri as a better home for us. And we declare that they will have all the rivers of God flowing there. God is going to show his glory to the show me state. The river of God will flow through Missouri, bringing signs and wonders and miracles. God is releasing the sheer anointing, opening the eyes of Missouri to see prophetically. Four cities, four cities prophetically will have a release of evangelism that will overtake them. Kansas City, St. Louis, Jefferson City, and Carthage. Missouri has lifted prayer and worship to a new level and is setting the captives free. We know that right now there is an agenda, a higher agenda around this world, and part of that high agenda is the climate control issue. So we lift up the cloaking of the climate agenda. In Genesis chapter 128, and God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fulfill the earth and rule it. In Job 26, 7, God spread the north pole in the sky and hung the earth in the void. Isaiah 40, verse 22, God sat upon the great circle of the earth and the inhabitants of the earth where like locusts, he stretches out the sky like a veil and spreads out the heavens like a tent to live in. Matthew seven, fifteen to 16. Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing on the outside, but wolves who are really cruel on the inside, and you can recognize them by their fruit. In 2 Timothy 3, 6. These are those who sneak into people's houses and imprison ignorant women. Again, we're lifting up the lie 
of climate change and how the world is trying to change our way of thinking. So we pray to uncover the climate agenda. Father, the enemy attempts to use the climate agenda to transform the market economy into a government economy with human intervention and control to make the world economy and competitive and to promote globalism. Please, Lord, remove the disguise of the climate agenda. Free people from the propaganda of fear and hatred and help countries to get rid of the enemy's control and interference in the world economy with the climate agenda. We pray for God to give the children of God the spirit of discernment. Abba Father, use the Holy Spirit to breathe on your children. Give the children of God the spirit of discernment. No longer agree with the propaganda of the ideas of the enemy. Break all the deceptions of the devil and be able to deeply understand planted in the truth and love of Christ. In the name of Jesus. We pray that the God's spirit and power would fill the church. It's found in Ephesians chapter 3, 16 and 18. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend all with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, the depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up with all the fullness of God. And dear Father, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit this day. Fill us with your joy, your wisdom, and with constant reminders that your presence will go with us and will give us rest. Thank you, Father, that you came to give new life, peace, hope, and joy to your children. Thank you that your power is made perfect in our weakness. We know that you are with us and you fight for us. We believe that it's not by might, then it's not by power, but it's by your spirit that you make a difference in this world. We choose to trust you today and to recognize the authority of who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Today, we pray for the leaders of this nation and around the world, wherever leaders may be, whether they're in the political power, whether they're in the commercial church, wherever it may be, we pray for leaders. And we pray for in the federal, the state, and the local areas. We pray God's will as described in his word and we pray back to him. And that it doesn't matter whether we like or agree or disagree with any particular leader. We are simply just to pray for the leaders out of obedience. We first and pray that all leaders would know and serve Jesus Christ First, as their personal Lord and Savior, we pray that God would give them his wisdom and that each leader would operate in his wisdom. We pray that each leader would flee from evil and embrace only righteousness. We lift up that God, godly leaders would stand boldly and courageously in the face of evil and that God would prevent leaders from working wickedness in this nation, but would help them to bear godly fruit in their lives and governmental service. And let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Father God, your word says to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Therefore, Father, I thank you for hearing our prayer today. Thank you that you sit upon the circle of the earth as the judge and redeemer of mankind and of nations, that you are great and you are worthy to be praised. And Father God, we lift up our voice and cry to you right now for your help and justice in this nation. I pray, Father, that if there is any unrighteous politician in this nation who can still be saved at any level of government, then we ask you, Lord God, to save them. Wake up their consciences. Let your Holy Spirit convict them of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Show them Jesus so clear that they cannot deny he exists and grant them a deep repentance. Help them bend the knee to Jesus, making him the Lord and Savior of their lives. But Father God, if there are any politicians at any level who have given themselves over to this degenerated mind, those who have rejected you for the last time, who have no conscience left, and for whom there is no hope of salvation. For these, Father, I ask you to expose them. Lord, remove every wicked politician who does not have your will and our nation's best interest at heart. Reveal their evil works to the world. Bring them to justice. Let them be removed and replaced with godly politicians in those seats of power as your word says in Psalms 109.8, let his days be few and let another take his office. I'm not praying for the death of any person. Father, but I do ask that every wicked politician days in office would be few and that a righteous person would take their office. Father, I ask you to give us righteous leaders Give us people who will serve you at every level of government, from every federal office to every local school board. Give us the power whom you want to office, and those who will serve this nation and her people well. Let your righteous leaders stand boldly for you, Father, and give them influence. Let them win every battle by the power of your might, and you and your spirit fight for them. Father God, I also pray that you would give our leaders wisdom. Teach them to walk in your ways. Disciple them personally. Father, bind and prevent them from doing anything that is not your will. But help them to carry out everything that is your will on this earth. Father, we thank you. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. We depend on you to give us righteous leaders and righteous government. Let all people rise up and vote your will. But I pray that you would do the rest, which we cannot. And we thank you, Abba Father. We thank you for your help. We love you. And we give you all the praise in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we close out this awesome time together with the firewall covering prayer. It's a hedgerow of protection around you, around your family, around your workplace, around this nation. Abba, Father, I thank you for watching and blessing us coming in and going out from now and forevermore. Abba Father, help us to hide under the shadow of the Almighty and cover us with your wings. I now plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over myself, over my family, over the church. 
over the ministries. Father, over the workplaces. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, over finances and property, over vehicles. Father, for pastors and for leaders, Lord, specifically, Lord God, for our leader, Lord God, of this nation. Those that are in government, those that are in that are governors, those that are mayors, those that are our local school board, in the name of Jesus. Abba Father, send us the host of angels and chariots of fire to surround and protect us. And I ask that you place the power of the cross of Jesus Christ in between everyone and the power of darkness that may not that we may be fight, fa facing today to block all ungodly influences and keep us from all spiritual attacks, loss of property, and any evil strategy of the enemy. We declare that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from the evil one. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we close out this daily prayer in one accord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I want to say God bless you as we press in toward tomorrow. May the Lord open your eyes to see him, experience his glory and power, and we want to thank you for joining us, for being a part of In One Accord, the opportunity for the body of Christ to pray together, seek his face, as we see in John 17, verse 20 to 23, where Jesus prayed, I pray not for them, but for those also, that they would be one, as I and the Father are one. God bless you, we love you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a blessed and wonderful day. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen.